The Mutable Instruments Plates has always been an amazing oscillator module. It had two sets of eight oscillator models, the green set and the red set. And now with the new firmware, 1.2, they added a third set of eight models. So now it's got 24 oscillator models, and I could not remember these for the life of me. So I created a cheat sheet that's got basically a listing of all the oscillator names on the first page for all three sets. And then there's one page per set that tells you what each of the controls does for each of the oscillators. So if I go to the green page, that's got all eight oscillator types. It's got all the controls for each oscillator for the harmonics, timbre, and morph controls, as well as the differences in the aux outputs with a few notes for each, uh, and some special notes about different controls that work a little differently. And then there's a page for the red models, the red set of eight oscillator types, and then a page for the orange oscillator types. So there's eight models per page per set. And hopefully this cheat sheet helps other people the way it helped me remember not only what the models were, but how to control them. And of course, over time, hopefully you don't need the cheat sheet. Hopefully I don't need the cheat sheet uh, so that I can use the, um, m the module more effectively. But this definitely helped me get up to speed and hopefully it helps uh, other people as well. I will so this is the plates module, actually three of them. I've only got two plugged in right now, but we're gonna focus on the center one typically. And a couple of things to know right before you think about using the cheat sheet, of course, but using the module itself, is you wanna upgrade it to firmware 1.2. That's what I'm gonna be talking about mostly. And that's, for me, what really put me over the edge in loving this thing. I loved it before, I love it more now. There's now a third set of models, the orange set, and you can see, maybe you can see the difference in the color of these. These are both orange and that one's green. Um, and the way these buttons work now is different. Once you install the firmware, one, and two, change the setting of the module to use the new firmware models. And the way you do that is by pushing both of these buttons simultaneously. And I've already done that on all my plates modules. But once you do that, these buttons operate differently where instead of this button being red and that button being green, now each button moves a different direction through all the models. So this right button moves through the models forward, green first, then red, then orange, and back to green. And this button moves backwards so from green, it'll take us backwards through orange, and then through red, and then through green. And now we're back to where we were. So once you do that, that's great. The next thing to know about is that you want to try the new mode of the frequency knob once you have firmware 1.2 installed. The new mode of the frequency knob is octave mode. And octave mode makes it so that once you tune the oscillator, the frequency knob won't get it out of tune. So if you're performing and you knock into the frequency knob, it won't actually knock it out of tune. It'll actually just change the octave. And it's actually quite nice. So um, I will turn up the volume and you'll see how the octave changes. really sweet because it's also good to adjust the frequency during a performance. So I really love that. All right, so now once you've got that, you want to get the cheat sheet. And I think uh, you probably saw that at the beginning of this video or the other video. And this is the cheat sheet. I actually printed it out. Well, and that's the first page just tells you what the models are. The second page tells you how to actually use the module to adjust the models. So check out that. And I'm going to run through very quickly the orange models. So I'm in the green right now. And you can use the cheat sheet to tell you how to adjust the green models. But I'm going to go forward through the percussives. Let me turn this down a bit. 
through the percussives and then into orange mode. Orange. You can probably hear me shuffling papers. It's the classic wave shape with a filter. And harmonics is the filter resonance and the filter character. So let's see what that sounds like. Clockwise is more of a harsh 12 decibel per octave setting. Counterclockwise, more gentle 24 decibel per octave. Amber is actually the filter cutoff. So you can see I'm opening up the filter a bit there. Closing it down. I'm going to turn those percussion sounds down a bit. Morph is actually the waveform and sublevel. And right now we're only getting the um, low pass output. The aux would give us in this mode a 12 decibel per octave high pass output. I don't have that plugged in right now. But it's great that you can actually get both could put them in two different channels and mix between them. So let's go to the next model, which is a phase distortion and modulation. Whoa, whoa, that's pretty heavy. And the harmonics in this case is the distortion frequency. Low to high. while the timbre is actually a distortion amount. So let's I'll turn the volume down so it doesn't crush you. Heavy distortion, light distortion. And then morph is distortion asymmetry. Pretty cool. All right, let's go to the third model. The third model actually is the same as the fourth and fifth in general. These are the DX7 models, and these are the most powerful. This is just uh, insane how much power this gives you because this will allow you to play basically any DX7 sound uh, pretty much. And there is actually an app, it's a web app, so it runs on Chrome, I think, that lets you pick which models, uh, which presets you put into the mo uh, module. And you can do that on channel three or model three, four, and five. These are all the DX7 modes. So again, if you look at the cheat sheet, you can see that the three, four, and five are grouped. And those are the DX7 modes. So within these modes, I'll turn the volume up a little bit. Harmonics actually chooses which preset. And for every one of the three, four, and five modes, there's 32 presets on the harmonic style. So that's pretty sick. That's 96 settings, 96 oscillators, <laughs> pretty much. Let me see if I can go through a few of these. So this is on channel three or mode three, and you'll hear it change as I turn it. I have the frequency pretty pretty low, so I'll turn that up a little so you can hear more. There's another one. <laughs> so you can see there's just a, almost endless opportunity here. And in these modes, morph 
is the envelope and modulation stretching. They call it time travel. I'm not sure I totally understand that. And the timbre is the modulator level. So I can turn the modulation way down or way up. And in this mode, or th all three of these modes, three, four, and five, trigger actually does something special as well. So that's outlined in the cheat sheet. Basically, the, it alternates the trigger of the two voices, which is pretty cool. Uh, level is also a velocity control in this case. So if you put a modulator into the level input, you will get uh, velocity control. So now I can run through four as well, but these are just different presets, all DX7 presets. And five, same thing, all DX7 presets. So I won't run through all those, but basically you can pick which 96 uh, presets you have using that Chrome app, and you can get that at the uh, Mutable Instruments site. And uh, let's move on to the next. The next one, which is, these, that was three, four, and five. We're moving on to number six in the orange mode. This is wave terrain synthesis, where harmonics picks the terrain. Really cool. Timbre is the radius of the path. And morph is the offset of the path. So again, so much opportunity for modulation here and for just selection of sound. So the sound design possibilities, and hopefully you're getting a feeling for why I have three. Uh, and um, actually, I also have a do-it-yourself module, the knit from After Later Audio. So I actually have four of these, which is crazy. But I don't think I need other oscillators anymore. I'm going to reduce the size of my rack at some point and just keep all these, maybe. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven is the string machine emulation. And this is just incredible. It's got a stereo filter and chorus, and the harmonics in this case is the chord selection. So let's go through a few of those. and chorus, timbre is the chorus and filter amount. And morph is the waveform. So you maybe get different orchestral sounds. change my triggers a little so we don't get so sick of that. Okay. Uh, and what else? Uh, yeah, and again, output and aux are, are doing two different uh, sets of voices, voice one and three, and voice two and four. So you can really, again, have more control once you put it in three, one of your mixers. And let's go to the last one, which is eight. Ooh, that's really harsh. Let's turn that down a bit. This is a four variable square voice for chords and arps. So again, the harmonics controls what the chord is and then the timbre controls the arpeggio type or the chord inversion. And morph is a pulse wave sync. Now in this case, the timbre um, attenuverter and the trig actually have separate, uh, very specific controls. This is the envelope shape. Although I might have to actually plug something into the uh, control there to make that work. I'm not 
sure, but um, I'll have to try more of those. And it sounds like actually, again, the out and the aux do something very different. But a tremendous amount of control. So those are the eight uh, orange settings. And of course, the green and the red uh, have not really changed, but they're still there for you. So you can just run through those by going forward even further. And now I'm back to the old, old modes, which are also great. And that's it. So right now I have both of these two plates running, and they're running through actually a kind of a chord harmonic um, oh, bah, 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 the, the instruo harmonic uh, so I'm getting two different notes I'm getting the root and the third so I can turn that up so you can hear both of them So now you, can, you know, if you have two of these and you can combine these sounds and then modulate them, it's just incredible. So hope that helps. And again, don't forget to go to the description to see the link to the PDF if you want to get the cheat sheet. Thanks for watching.